Hello YouTube viewers and this is Brian of Go Figure Customs coming to you with my second video. Still not doing anything fancy. I have my iPhone gaffer taped to my tripod that I use for still photography. I'm hoping to upgrade in the future. We'll see. If this takes off, it may be worth the investment. But until then, it's old fashioned. Now, for the second video, I'll be doing an unboxing of the uh, High Toys APC, the armored personnel carrier from Aliens. I still think a script probably would have been a good idea, but as my buddy Pugsley suggested, bullet points probably will serve the purpose for today. And yes, I have a buddy named Pugsley. Doesn't everybody? I thought about writing a script, but I couldn't wait to tear into this thing. I also thought about taking it out of the box, taking it apart, looking it over, putting it all together so I could do a really good review of this thing. But again, I couldn't wait. And it just got here. I set my proximity alarm so I know when FedEx dropped it off. And that alarm consisted of Izzy and Jack, who are my two blue healers. And they did not fail me for once. Now, before we tear into this thing, a lot of people have been waiting for this for a really long time. I think the pre-order came out sometime in 2016. I know I pre-ordered it the second it went live at Big Bad Toy Store. That's where I get most of my stuff. Since I work overseas, I love the pile of loot. I can All my stuff just sits there, and then I don't have to ship it until I get ready to come home. Um, this is made by Haya Toys. Uh, I tried to find out a little bit about the company online to do a thorough review, and there just isn't that much out there. They do have a couple of fairly decent licenses right now. Uh, it seems mostly geared to 118 scale. Uh, they do are going to release a set of figures for the uh, DC Comics Injustice line. Uh, I have a couple of those on pre-order, probably do a review of those as well. Um, they do obviously have the Aliens line, they have an extensive line of, um, line of figures for Colonial Marines and Aliens. I don't have any of those yet. I have, I purchased the Hot Toy Snap Kit figures, 118th scale Snap Kit figures for the Colonial Marines. And those were utter garbage. So I was a little hesitant to reinvest. And it just wasn't something that I wanted at the time when those came out. The other license that they have that's pretty cool is the Predator license and those are in 118 scale here and I've got one on the deck of my on the top of my flag and he's getting ready to fight my Dutch Schaefer custom. Anyway, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was that I think a lot of people are going to be concerned about the quality control on this. You got to keep in mind this is not Hasbro, it's not Mattel, this is small batch independent toy makers. They are not making a lot of these. They don't have the money that Hasbro and Mattel, the larger toy companies would have to invest in the quality control. There may be some, some problems with these things. I am going to be tolerant of that, even though it does have a higher price tag. Again, that's due to how many of these things they're putting out. Hasbro can lower have lower prices because they're putting out more product. You have more coming out, you can have a lower lower price point. That's kind of the downside to the small batch stuff. The distribution seems to be a big problem for people right now that I see on Facebook comments about where is my stuff. Again, they don't Hasbro can't get distribution right. So for a small toy company to get their product out has to be a challenge in and of itself. Just be patient. Yeah, I know it's expensive. Yeah, I know you've wanted this thing since 2016, but it's here. It is coming. Now, that being said, let's tear into it. Off screen, I've got a box from Big Bad Toy Store here I haven't even opened yet. So, 
let's dig into this bitch. First on top. Oh. More Predator figures. Fantastic. That is the Predator Warrior figure. The Elder figure. It looks like there's another one in there. And the Boar Predator. All right. Outer box. Hiya Toys, Aliens, CM Armored Personnel Carrier, 118th scale vehicle, distributed by Diamond Comics. Pretty brown, pretty bland brown exterior packaging. Let's see if there is an interior package, or if it just comes in this. Again, I've specifically ignored posts on Facebook and other social media regarding this just because I wanted to see it coming straight out of the box just as much as you did. Alright. Oh yeah, there's a second box in here. Alright, let's try not to destroy everything getting it out. black exterior. I was kind of maybe hoping for some kind of cool box art. I'm a big fan of art on packaging, but not on this one this time. And you know what? That's all right. If a box has really cool box art, I am not inclined to throw it away, and I really don't need more empty boxes sitting around right now. All right, opening it up, we've got a pull-out styrofoam insert holding it in place. <laughs> it's in there pretty good. Let's try this. Ooh. Oh, nope. <laughs> it's in there pretty good. We're going to open the back here, too, and kind of push it out. You know, as a paramedic, I'm supposed to know how to deliver children. I think I'd know how to get an armored personnel carrier out of a box, but apparently that is a, not a national registry skill that I'm really concerned about. Alright, here we go. Oh, there's an insert. Take a look at that in a second. Uh, another insert, looks like instructions. the outside of the styrofoam insert is a colonial marine. I either forgot or didn't know it was going to come with one of these. I don't remember which. So we've got a colonial marine in there. Uh, looks like the female. I don't remember what they were calling her. She comes with a uh, pulse rifle and one of the flamethrowers too, which is pretty cool. I, so bonus figure. I was not expecting that. Uh, the insert, we've got instructions on that the front turret moves, that the top turret slides to the back. There's no wording, it's just all arrows, like a bad Transformers set of directions. Looks like there's a list of the batteries that you need. I don't know if it comes with batteries. I've seen pictures of it lit up on Facebook, so I'm hoping that it does come with batteries. The other insert looks like a product list. Shows the four aliens that are available, the three 
Moraine's currently available. Uh, picture of the power loader and of course the APC on the back. The bigger aliens, the Crusher and the Raven, and the three other Colonial Marines that are currently available. All right. Break the seal on this beast. now all right so matte black finish uh, I was kind of expecting it to be uh, green uh, the uh, if I remember right the one in the movie was was kind of an, a dark olive drab green this is definitely a matte black finish uh, either way works for me um, as a customizer, I can make any color I want. I don't think I'll customize this though. I'll probably just leave this the way it is. So, front turret moves side to side. Big rolling wheels. We got a door that opens on the side. Let's make sure we get this in video yet. On this turret on the top, side to side. And uh, there's no up or down motion to it, side to side only. And it, it does slide to the back, just like it did in the movie. Uh, on the top and on the body, there's some nice little features sculpted. I'm gonna say you're gonna probably have to be really careful with this. There's a couple handholds here and there's some grating here. Those are going to break off real easy if you are not careful with this. A uh, few little greebles sculpted on. Uh, this looks like maybe, I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. A uh, ladder on the back also looks pretty fragile. Uh, and then there's a door on the driver's front. And that does open. If you can see it there. Opens and closes. Uh, the front got some headlights and it is uh, marked uh, 2D from the Sulaco so this is the one that came is from the movie uh, looks like I got a pull out tab here for the batteries pulling that out and yeah it comes with batteries so there you are there's your light up feature for their headlights the switch for the headlights is at the front uh, looks like there's another switch at the back maybe Not sure. All right, so let's figure out how to get this. I know the top comes off. The top just pops off. There's where another pull-out tab for the batteries. Oh, yeah, there we go. Check that out. Big spotlight on the top. There's your grating that I'm talking about. You better be careful with that when you get that out. When you store that, that's gonna pop. That's gonna that's gonna break pretty easily. We're gonna set that aside and take a look at the inside. There's a rubber band holding the, the seats together. So, inside. Uh, hang on a sec, I'm looking for the other battery switch. Uh, it looks like the back part of it, I see a hinge here. I'm looking to see how this pops open without breaking anything. There we go. Oh, wow. Jeez, this thing's fantastic. All right, starting from the front to the back, we've got the driver's seat here. Uh, this really can't, can't show you too well here. We've got, we got a swiveling driver. Uh, the driver's seat does not swivel. 
highly detailed control panel. Lots of well-painted buttons inside there. And another command console next to it. Uh, to the left and rear of it, there's two seats. That's where a Ripley would have set, if I remember correctly, uh, with a swing arm to bring down the safety bar. Across from that, there's a weapons locker. Or not a locker, but a, a rifle rack, I suppose, is more appropriate term for it. I don't think that's where Ripley set. I think this is where Ripley set. Uh, next to the door, oop, where he popped off the, the arm there for the, for the safety bar. And it pops right back on there, it looks like. So you get two seats, four seats on the left wall. And then the command chair. Does that swivel? It does not appear to swivel. But it does slide like it did in the movies. That's where Gorman would have sat to what to control, maintain. Uh, to he didn't really maintain control in the movie, did he? Uh, but the command console is here, and then in the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seats for your Colonial Marines. Now I'm pretty sure that lights up, but I'm not sure how that works. So, and of course the back slides down, so it doesn't, it's not, it's more of a access feature rather than a play feature, I would say. So it's not so much that you can open up the back and your troops can pull out, deploy out the back because they'll deploy out the, the sliding door like they did in the movie, but it at least allows you access to it, which I really like. I mean, this... Vehicles like this, this is kind of one of the failings of the, when G.I. Joe tried to make something like this, they made the Rhino in the DTC line, direct-to-consumer line. And my, one of my biggest complaints with it, didn't really have the best access for the interior. This has full access to everything inside through the top. Now I'm pretty sure the, ins like I said, the inside lights up. Let me try to, oh yeah, there we go. So it's the headlight. So the headlight switch on the bottom, and that does light up the, your interior there. Hopefully we can see this. Bear with me. First video. In the future, we'll try and do something better. So there it is. That's the APC. Now. I know a lot of the questions are going to be, uh, we already talked about the features, so we got the, the gun, the pop-off top, and the, the uh, back that opens, plus your Colonial Marine that comes with it. Um, scale. So how is it in scale to with, say, your G.I. Joes? Well... Let's find out. Need a volunteer. Who's going to volunteer? Sci-Fi is going to volunteer. Right now he's busy. He's been busy stopping an incursion on the US fl USS flag. Cover's trying to take it over. He ain't going to let him. So, take his backpack and gun off for a minute. Figure Sci-Fi is probably the most appropriate one. Well, there's sci-fi in the driver's seat right there. I'd say that's pretty decent scale. Maybe a hair big. Maybe just a little bit. But man, not really a lot. Not enough to... to I don't see, he wasn't even in the seat all the way. Yeah, no, I'd say that's perfect. I'm using the... Uh, obviously the, the, the modern scale Joes. Not using an O-ring Joe here. Let's try him when one of the seats on the side under the safety bracket there. Safety, the restraining bar 
is just pretty much for looks. That is not going to stay in one place at all. It's not going to hold any figure in place at all. So there he is in the seat there. Moving to the command console. The command chair kind of rocks back and forth. I think that's just so you can get a figure in there. sci-fi running the show slide that chair back and forth there yeah. right, here comes my alarm system Izzy Bella hello Izzy did you help come to review this she's wagging her tail so I think that means yes and then in the back Maybe a little big in that seat on the back. It still closes. It looks a little tight for the two seats put together. So that might be a, a problem that people might have is getting this thing loaded up. Now I don't, since I don't have any of the Colonial Marines, well I do have one of the Colonial Marines. What am I talking about? I was going to say I don't have a Colonial Marine too demonstrate this with, but I actually do. I'm a little wary to start moving the joints on some of these figures just due to, like I mentioned earlier, the quality control. It may, you may break some of these figures because they're so stiff. That is a easily remedied problem, however. Before you start playing with one of these guys, what you do is you get a coffee cup full of water, stick it in the microwave for three minutes, get it nice and hot, set your figure in the water for three minutes, and then take it out, and then, then you start manipulating the joints. That hot water will soften up the plastic and will prevent your joints from breaking. I recommend doing that with any of these small batch toy companies. The Haya Toys, the Colonial Marines, the Predators, uh, the World, I know the uh, War of Order figures, which I have somewhere on deck. I know here they, yeah. Here's one of the War of Order figures. This will be perfect for these guys. I, I boiled and heated my guys up before I started using them. And I have not had any problems with any of these figures. I know I saw a lot of people saying that they were breaking arms and wrists and legs. But I heated mine up before I, I got him. Or before I started playing with him and he's fine. So there we go. Let me take you out sci-fi. You can sit there for a minute. So there's a War of Order figure running the show in here. And I got to tell you, for what I got this for, since I don't have any of the Colonial Marines, I am a huge fan of the War of Order stuff, and I'm really looking forward to the Planet Green Valley toys when they come out. And I also have... Some of the Joy Toy Russian Spetsnaz figures. And I really like these two. I saw a lot of people complaining about these two. About how they're not as nice as, like, say, the Marauder Task Force figures. Because the Marauder stuff is modular. Just clips right on. I think people are comparing oranges and apples when it comes to the Marauder figures. Versus the Joy Toy uh, Russian Spetsnaz figures. The Marauder figures are designed to be modular. They're designed for the parts to interchange. The Joy Toy figures, they're not designed to have interchangeable gear. This is more of a model kit that you can play with after you put it together. When you think of it like that, it's unique. It's a unique idea. It's different. And it's pretty cool. 
I do like the Marauder stuff because it is interchangeable. I'm a huge proponent of that. All my customs have interchangeable gear. But for what this is, I, I do like the, the, the idea of a, a model kit that I can put together and play with. As a customizer, that's kind of what I do anyway. I put together figures that can be played with later. So this APC is not really going to go to any Colonial Marines. Instead, it's going to go to my War of Order figures and my Spetsnaz guys who may defect at some point. Who can say, really? Yeah. Well, there you go. I didn't really take the time to really position him nicely to get his legs in there, but just roughly stuck him in there. He fits fine. Perfect scale. I would, uh, I, since we didn't, since I didn't open this previously, like I had thought about doing, I didn't take the time to heat this up, and I am going to heat this figure up before I start moving it around because I don't want to break the pieces on it. So I am not going to use the hot toy or the uh, the uh, Colonial Marine that came with this in this demonstration. So I am sorry about that. And I did mention the uh, the hot toy snap kit figures and how they were garbage. You know, I bought a whole set of those, and this is all I got left. These things break like crazy. Gorman's missing an arm, and he's missing his lower legs below his knees. And I'm pretty sure this is Hicks. No, that's that's Hudson. He lost. He got a below the knee, above the knee amputation, and uh, he was decapitated as well. So, not a pleasant ending. What else do we have here? We did the GI Joe, which is perfect scale. What else do I have that I can show you here? That you might be curious about. I've got a Deathlock figure from the Marvel Universe line, or Marvel, yeah, Marvel Universe line. I'm gonna take his backpack off. Deathlock's a big guy, even in the comics, so he might not fit as well in here. Eh, yeah, I think Deathlock might be a little bit big for that, so maybe not in scale with those. Got another War of Order figure sitting right here. Taking the backpack off. Ooh, no, that backpack doesn't, that backpack's pegging him. We're gonna leave that backpack there. Uh, we'll store his, see if I can store his weapon on the weapons rack here. The weapons rack just looks like it's uh, a couple, uh, a row, two rows of raised uh, rectangles. It does not look like any sort of clips any, t any sort of retaining clips. So if your weapon isn't, the wep whatever weapon you're using isn't designed to go in there, it's probably not going to stay in there. But I don't know. That looks like fit, like that fits in pretty well. Can you, can you see that in there? And of course, you know, if, if you can't see any of this stuff, be sure and sound off in the comments below and ask for pictures. Because photography is one thing that I do fairly well. So I can always shoot some uh, actual pictures of this stuff. And, and uh, what I'll do is I'll post them on my customizing Facebook page. Uh, Go Figure Customs by Hawkeye. Uh, you know what? Yeah, that rifle popped right out of there because it wasn't designed to stay in there. What might have been designed to stay in there, however, is... Well, see, there's some clips in there for the, oh, and there's a pistol. It also comes with a pistol. I didn't see that the first time. There's a couple of what looks to be black clips in with the pulse rifle. I'm not sure what those are for. I'm wondering if those are for the weapons locker here. Let's see if they clip onto anything. Uh... Doesn't look like it. I'm, I'll see if there's in some instructions or maybe somebody smarter than myself figured out what those are for. So we'll take the pulse rifle. Oh, where did I, 
Whoa. Hand dropping everything here. Big pulse rifle. Store it. Let's try to barrel up. Oh yeah, pulse rifle goes right in there. Right in there. Let's see. Um, pulse rifles. GI Joe. Uh, I think it was one of the Hawks or Dukes. Came with a from the Pursuit of Cobra line. Came with uh, a weapon that looked very much like a pulse rifle. Also, if you're looking for, because you know you, unless you have a bunch of these figures, it's going to be hard to fill out that weapons rack with actual pulse rifles. So, GI Joe had one. I think it came with one or two different figures. I can't remember the which ones right off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody uh, will sound off in the comments below and tell us which figures those came with. Also, you can get a very nice uh, pulse rifle from uh, Marauder Inc. Marauder Guns Inc. Uh, I get all of my custom weapons from or yeah, custom weapons from them, um, and I probably have one somewhere. Let me see if I can find one really quickly. If not. I'll post a comment whether or not it fits when I find one. I may have it quickly. All right, let's look here. Let's see if I get a pulse rifle handy really quickly. Yep, I do, right there. All right, so here's the Marauder Inc. pulse rifle. This came out... Maybe their third wave, second or third wave. Marauder John or uh, Marauder Ruben can correct me on that if I'm wrong. It's a little loose, but it fits in there. Um, no, it just fell right out. Let's try it barrel down. Yeah, it fits, but I don't think it's going to, yeah, it fell right out. So, sort of, but not really. All right, well, shucks. Although, you know what, give it time, and I'll bet people are molding and casting these weapons soon enough. All right, the flamethrower, let's see how the flamethrower fits in there. I'm going to do that barrel down. Yeah. And barrel up. Yeah, if you go barrel up with the flamethrower, it fits in there as well. Might not be able to see that. We may have to do better pictures of that later. All right. Uh, let's see. What else am I missing here? Let me look at my bullet points really quick. Scale, we went over scale. Uh, it will fit your modern G.I. Joe figures fairly well, which I think is has been everybody's concern, uh, is wondering whether or not it's going to work with their Joes, and I'm going to say that it is. Uh, Marauder Task Force figures. Um, here's my custom wetsuit. He's made from one of the Marauder Task Force figures. Yeah, he fits in there just fine. His flippers fell off. So, yeah, Marauder Task Force figures are going to fit in there fairly well. Um, do I have... I don't have one of the... I do have one. Hang on a sec here. Let's get a, one of the Valkyries and put in there. So we got the, one of the dogs from the recent Kickstarter there, and one of the mech suits. I think the mech suit is going to be fantastic for it, a fast, fantastic accessory to play with this. But what I do have handy is one of the Valkyries from the recent Kickstarter. Ooh, don't want to lose that knife. It's not on there right. Yeah. 
All right, so Marauder Task Force Valkyrie. I'm going to try her in one of the Marines, the Colonial Marine seats here. don't have any uh, pouches on her right now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, she fits in there perfectly. So there's your, there's your Marauder Task Force Valkyrie sitting in the back seat there. I'll tell you what, if you're a big fan of these uh, Valkyrie figures, these are the best scale for this, quite honestly. I'm really looking forward to seeing the uh, Planet Valley figures since those are the first wave is uh, all female. Let's put a War of Order figure in the seat next to her and see how that, see how well they sit together. Yeah, and the, the little retaining clips just fall right off. I'm not going to put that on, back on. So, let's try and do this without dropping in there. Can you see that? So we got a war, I'm going to put my thumb over, the, finger over this so they don't fall out. There's a War of Order figure next to a Marauder Task Force Valkyrie sitting in the side-by-side the -side seats. They're, they fit in there almost perfectly. I was thinking the seats might be a little too tight to put to, a little tight but uh, I think they, together they fit pretty well. Let's put somebody in the seat across from them. One of the Russian Spetsnaz guys. Nope, retaining clips down there. I'm just gonna, that one doesn't wanna come out. Yeah, I'm just gonna take that out. All right, so I've got him, one of the, Joy Toy Spetsnaz figures here. Let's do it from that side. Sitting in the back, across from the Valkyrie, and next to Caddy Corner to one of the World Order figures. So, I think that should answer your your questions on uh, if this thing is going to be in scale for any line that you currently play with. Joy Toy works perfectly. Marauder Task Force figures. The male bucks work really nice. The female Valkyries are made for this thing. The War of Order figures fit perfectly as well. I think just the slightly smaller scale is really nice. Although, you know, your Joes, as uh, Sci-Fi was so kind to point out for us, fit in there just fine too. Uh, I was going to go over pros and cons of this thing. So, uh, so let's do that real quick before I wrap it up. The cons, definitely going to, I think a lot of people are going to say the price point on this. This is a $250 toy. Um, and that's a lot of money for a lot of people. So the price point on this probably is going to be its biggest con. And again, I've, I've, hit on that point it's because it is a smaller batch toy company they're not mass producing this to the point where this could be more affordable say a hundred and fifty dollars maybe even a hundred dollars you know you see the Star Wars stuff like uh, the hover tank from the uh, Rogue One line when that came out was I think the retail price was $79.99 you can get it on Amazon for $49.99 you know, that's what happens to the Hasbro stuff. It, it'll go on clearance. Ever. It'll go on clearance. And that's what everybody does. They wait for it to go on clearance. This isn't going to go on clearance. This is probably going to start hitting the secondary market. And you're going to see scalpers putting this thing on eBay for $300, $400, $450. Well, that's kind of a prediction. We'll see if I'm right on that or not. I'll start watching that. So the, the biggest con, definitely the, the price point. Um, as far as the vehicle itself, one of the con, the big, my, my biggest concern is some of the features that are sculpted onto this, um, like the grating over the headlight or over the spotlight, um, the ladder on the back, uh, there's a, 
looks like a little little warning light here. There's a <coughs> a little grate that goes over that. Those are going to get snapped off. I will almost guarantee it if you are not careful. Other than that, the the tires feel like they're softer rubber on the outside, but they're not quite the real soft rubber that um, that you're used to on some of the the fancier vehicles. So it is a solid rubber tire. But then again, you know, I mean, the APC would have had solid tires in in real life. Um, so cons, price point, some of the features, some of the sculpted on features are going to probably break off. Other than that, and maybe the color, maybe the color. Um, black works for me, but like I said in the movie, I think it was, I think it was all of drab green. I may be wrong on that. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Sound off in the comments below and let me know if I'm wrong. But Black goes with everything. Black's really slimming, right? So I can live with the black. And like I said, if I want to, I can I can always customize it if I want to. I, I'm not going to, but I could. Um, so those are the the kind of the cons of this of this thing. The opposite of that, of course, is the pros. So man, where do you start? It the light up controls the light up uh, headlights um, the fact that it'll seat 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 people 14 figures has a weapons rack that'll hold one two three four five six seven looks like eight pulse rifles or flamethrowers the details are nicely sculpted in there it looks like a solid toy. This isn't something that's going to break. You know, am, am I going to let a four or five year old play with this? Yeah, probably not. But as far as adult collectors, this is a solid chunk of plastic. I don't see this, you know, I don't see a lot of this breaking off. Uh, one of the cons I forgot to mention, uh, the retaining clips that go down over your figures that are in the seats. Those are not on the well on the wall right very well. They don't stay on very well. They pop off pretty quickly. Uh, I think that probably could have been engineered a bit better, but I'll bet if they'd have done it a bit better, it would have increased um, increased the price point. Um, however, the fact that they do just pop right off means that they're not going to break either, which is pretty nice. Uh, so pros. I think the biggest pro for this is that it is movie accurate. I've never seen anything even remotely like this aside from custom built models. Um, and it's the biggest pro is that it is in scale. It is in scale with your GI Joe figures, your modern GI Joe figures. Uh, you know what? I have an old ring figure right here, Copperhead. Copperhead's going to sit in the control seat. See here if I can get a shot of that. Whoop. So there's Copperhead sitting in the control seat there. So that's your vintage GI Joes fit in here extremely well because they are slightly smaller than the modern scale Joes. Your modern scale Joes fit in there fantastic. Your Marauder Task Force figures are going to fit in there fantastic, especially the Valkyries. Your War of Order figures are going to fit in there fantastic, and there's some more of those figures coming out pretty soon. And the, the Joy Toy uh, Russian Spetsnaz figures fit in there pretty well as well. Welcome to part two, YouTube viewers. Unfortunately, that is the downside of using an old iPhone. Uh, 64 gigs, half of that's music, another quarter of that's pictures that I've taken. That does not leave a lot of room for video. So... Hopefully in the future, I'll be able to remedy that problem. Also, the first part of this video was already 40, 40 minute, 44 minutes long. Another problem I ran into was my battery. 
Luckily, I have a travel battery that I've plugged my phone into to finish this off, which is also gaffer taped to my tripod. So let's finish this off. I think where my video cut out the first time was we were talking about pros and cons of the APC. The cons, bad news first, biggest con is definitely the price point. $250 is a lot to spend on one toy for most people. Um, if you don't have the cash to outlay for that, and the rest of it's just kind of a moot point, isn't it? If you can't afford it. Aside from that, once in hand, hmm, cons, I think the sculpted parts on the top, the gratings and the handholds look fairly fragile. I think those um, are going to get broken off uh, over time, especially if you're not really careful with it. Uh, inside, the the seat, the retaining clips for the seats is kind of a good news, bad news situation. Bad news is they don't stay on the wall very well, and they don't hold your figures in place very well. Kind of a little disappointed by that, but at the same time, they're soft plastic. So they're not going to break and they do pop right off the wall. So again, they're not going to break. The downside of that is eh, they're probably going to be easily lost. But you know, when you stop and think about it, if Hasbro had made this during the American Hero line, these things would be going for 200 bucks on eBay right now because nobody would have any left that were in one piece. Uh, aside from the price, the few little greebles that look like they could get broken off pretty quickly and the retaining clips, I do not have any other things negative to say about this toy. Um, I think one of the things I thought of was maybe the color. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I thought it was olive drab. I thought some of the pictures that had pre-production pictures of the toy that I'd seen were showing that it was olive drab. Me, myself... Don't care. Black works just fine for me. I'm not using this specifically for Colonial Marines, for aliens. I don't care what color it is. Would I have liked it to be olive drab? Nah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Black works for everything, though, right? Um, the pros for this thing, the light-up features are really pretty cool. Um, and I think the biggest pro that everybody really wants to know is the scale of this thing. Is it going to work with the figures that you already have? Are you going to, do you have to have the high toys colonial Marines to, to play with this? And the answer is yes, it will work with every figure that we've looked at today. Didn't look at the colonial Marine figure. Like I said, because I don't want to break it. I am, I'm going to soften mine up first before I start moving limbs around. But it works with your vintage G.I. Joe. We got Copperhead here sitting in the command seat. It works with your new modern G.I. Joes because we've got uh, Sci-Fi driving this thing right now. It works with your Marauder Task Force figures as uh, my wetsuit demonstrated and one of the new Valkyries is chilling out in the back right next to a, a War of Order figure which also works very well. And the, the Joy Toys Spetsnaz figures fit in there fantastic as well. They're a little bit bulkier, but I've got one in there right now, and he fits there just fine. I think the Planet Green Valley figures are going to look fabulous with this thing. The, the sculpt and the detail on those figures, I, I can't wait to get some of those because they're going to go straight, straight with this toy. Um, the... Uh, maybe kind of one of the other detracting features is the the weapons rack is n only going to hold the specifically the um, pulse rifle and the the um, the flamethrower and the oh there's my alarm system whining Izzy go away uh, is the that the the Marauder pulse rifle doesn't stay in the the weapons rack. Um, on its own because that would be a real easy way to fill out that weapons rack is to go to Marauder Inc. and uh, buy a whole bunch of those. I still recommend the guns though. 
uh, I don't have one of the GI Joe ones handy to, to try uh, and see if it fits in there. So bottom line, is it worth the $250? If you're a big Aliens fan, absolutely. Nothing else aside from custom models has ever come close to this. Uh, if you're a, a GI Joe or 118th scale collector, to me, this is a, I don't like to use the word must. I mean, it just, yeah, this is a must. This is a fabulous piece of, fabulous piece. It's a nice solid chunk of plastic that will fit every figure that you own. Um, it's worth the $250 in my opinion. Uh, if you have questions or, so I, I'm going to say that's about it for this, for this episode. So if you have questions or comments, sound off below. Um, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff that you do with YouTube. I'm kind of new to this, so I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Um, and I will get back to everybody on the questions and comments. Um, thanks for watching.